In the last tutorial, we took a look at the Pathfinder tools. In this one, we're going to take a look at the Shape Builder and the Live Paint tools. Let's create a new document again, and this time we're going to go over to the Ellipse tool, and I'm going to draw a few concentric circles. Now, one thing to note is that I'm using no fill at this point, and I'm going to draw my concentric circles starting from a center point by pressing the Alt key and holding the Shift key to make sure that I get them to be constrained to circles. And let's do one at half an inch, an inch, and one at an inch and a half. Now, if you were doing this with um, fills that were white, what would happen right now is that you wouldn't be able to see the circles on the inside, and that would kind of ruin what we're doing. So make sure that you remove that fill from the objects and you just have a stroke. Now we're going to draw a simple line from the center as well. And this is holding down the Alt key and then the Shift key to constrain it. This way I get a nice little X right there in the middle. Now we could create the same sort of thing um, in a little bit more less, you know, defined way. If I wanted to create a, a circle there and then let's see, create another circle here, another circle there. So these I know are, are all three different circle sizes. And then I can also do my X to the side here and another X there. So I just kind of randomly drew these. And then I'm going to select all of them together and then align them to the center horizontally and the center vertically. And you'll see I pretty much get the same thing. It's just not guaranteed that I'm as accurate about the sizes when I drew this particular one. I do want to point out one other way to draw this, which I think is really cool. And this is using um, the Blend tool. So I'm going to draw, draw my outer circle, and then I'm also going to draw the inner circle. Then, with the two of those selected, so I have to shift select both, then go to the Blend tool, and what you do is you click on one object, and you have to make sure that you're clicking on it directly. And then on the second one, you can see the little plus next to that icon. And what this does is this creates a blend between the two. Now you can double click on the blend tool. You can change it from smooth color to specified steps. And you can change it to a number of steps if you want. Then I like to press preview. And you'll see that we have one, two, three steps in between the outer one and the inner one. And this is a really effective way at creating concentric type things and a whole lot of other stuff. So I would definitely suggest that you play with the blend tool and see what you can create. And we'll come back to that um, more things with it in the future. Now, one of the things to be aware of that you need to do, though, with this blend tool is you need to go ahead and expand it afterwards if you want to work with it more. Because if it's still in the blend tool mode, you can't add anything else to it. Now the next thing we're going to do is create our X's right here in the middle. So I'll do it just like the other one. And that's it. Now, on the first one, we're going to select the whole thing and we're going to use the tool, which I think is pretty cool, and that is the Shape Builder tool. The Shape Builder tool is a really effective way at combining and um, adding different shapes together that are overlapping each other and um, currently selected. So you do have to select the object before you can apply to it, apply the shape builder to it. You'll notice that it won't apply to any of these objects over here. It'll only apply to the one that I'm over. In order to make sure that things are working, go ahead and click on the different things just to make sure that they are being selected. Now, another way that you can show that the way this tool works is to click and drag across ones. As you click and drag across them, you'll see that you add them together, creating one object instead of multiple. So I think that'll do for right now. And the next step I want to do is go ahead and turn that fill back to white. Now you'll see I have my individual objects that are inside here that I can add my color to if I want. Now the, the strokes on the outside are also individual objects that can certainly be deleted if you don't want them as well. Now that I have this object, I can fill it with color. So there's that. And I'll do that one with a little bit different color. 
Actually, why don't I just click on it so it'll do it both at the same time. And then I will fill those four with the same color. So a really simple way to create something, and of course you can always delete parts of it that you don't want if you want to do something in particular. Now with this next one, we're going to do a similar type of thing, but this time we're going to use what's called the Live Paint Bucket instead. With the Live Paint Paint Bucket, the first thing you have to do is click to make a Live Paint Group. Once you've made that paint group, then you can select the different shapes inside, and then you can apply color to them. So all I need to do here is select a color, and then I can go ahead and just click each time. And each time I click, it will create that, use that color that I have selected. So pretty neat what it can do. In fact, I'm not sure I wanted those to be that color. So I'll go to the other one and do those colors instead. Now, once I'm out of that particular um, tool, if you double click on it, I do want you to be aware that inside is actually a live object. This is a live paint, which means that if I move the, cut the objects inside, I actually change the way that the fills are applied. And this can be really to your advantage because it means you have a lot of flexibility. For example, if I decided that I wanted to rotate one of these and it wasn't quite right, I could rotate it, oh, who knows what degrees that I'm rotating it to get to the exact right thing that I wanted. So you can see that I have a lot of flexibility with that. Now, when you are done, you want to get out of that so you're no longer in the live paint. So you double click on the outside, select the object, and choose Object Expand. This will flatten that object and get rid of that stuff. Get rid of the, uh, the live paint that was going on. But what it does do is it makes an object that of course is now no longer um, easy for you to edit. Now one thing to be aware of is I double clicked on it and if I click on the outside here you'll notice that the strokes get separated from the fills when you use the live paint. So that's something to be aware of. In the first one, the strokes are still a part of the object itself. In the second one, when you do the live paint, the paint only fills inside the lines, not um, becomes part of the lines. You would then, of course, have to turn on the strokes again if you wanted to have that. Now see what you can do. Either method that you want to use for the more extreme object um, is fine. It pretty much gives you the same results no matter what. Sometimes I do find, you know, I like one versus the other. Now, the other thing that I wanted to point out, though, is that you can easily use this Pathfinder or the Shape Builder tool to create cool objects when you have the need to. So I'm going to create kind of like a simple version of the uh, Batman logo. It's definitely not going to be super accurate, but that's okay. I'm just kind of eyeballing this just to get started with it. So let's make sure I have these objects selected. So there's the objects right there. And I do want to go ahead and give them a stroke and fill just so I can see them. I know that I need a rectangle as well. Then let's see, I'm going to put that one in the background just real quick. That looks like that's kind of a rectangle as well. In fact, this one has rounded corners. And I can change them so I do different rounded corners. So there to there. Now I might be able to flip this from one side to the other. So I'm going to take that object, flip it on that side. Let's copy it. And that's good enough for right now. I just want to do this so I can demonstrate how this might be used. So I'll select all of that, go to the Shape Builder tool, and click on that one object in the center, and I have my new Batman logo that I could fill. So very easy to do. Experiment some yourself.